Coach Brian again with Northwest Elite Spirit, and today I am going to go over how to hold pads for combat sports. And the reason I'm doing this is because recently I've seen a couple of amateur mitt holder videos where people are, say, just doing it in their garage or part of a men's group or something, and I see them doing some things that are not beneficial and will actually be harmful to training, in my opinion, so I'm going to cover as much as I can think of today on how to hold mitts for combat sports. Now, you always want your fighter, like, I, let's say I'm a beginning mitt holder, I'm probably also working with a beginner, um, fighter, maybe not, maybe an experienced fighter, but we want them to start with a good stance, which would be a good horse stance. So you're gonna want your fighter to get in a good horse stance, like this, butts kind of sit and sat down, feet can be shoulder width apart or a little further, nice and relaxed, and then she's just going to turn and face me, right? And now she's in her fighting stance. Of course, different styles have different stances, but this is the one we're going to go with. Now the first issue and the thing that was bugging me most about these videos I recently watched was they would have the, the fighter throw the combo or the person they're training throw the combo, so one, two, remembering to turn your shoulder into that two. And then they would do their strike, which the, 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 the trainee is supposed to get out of the way of, right? So they would throw their strike and they would throw it way off to the side. No opponent is going to throw the jab away from her head because in all actuality, she doesn't even have to get out of the way. Just stay there. If I throw a jab like that, she doesn't have to get out of the way. So as a pad holder, I have to make this as real as possible. I don't want to jab with the front end here because especially if she's got a fight coming up, because I could cut her with that. So I could kind of give it a palm. So now I'm going to throw the palm at her face and she actually has to get out of the way and then she can come across with the two. Another issue that bothers me is that pad holders will hold pads like way out here. Um, your opponent's chin is going to be like here. So again, I try to hold them close for that reason too. So one, two. One, two. So it's like closer to the chin. Not only does that protect the shoulder, but it's closer to where the, the opponent's chin is actually going to be. And I understand that the opponents are gonna be moving around and stuff, so you can get wide sometimes, but again, watch that. You're, watch them shoulders, because they'll get wrenched and tore out of place, and you'll wonder why something's going on with your shoulder, and it'll be because of how you're um, holding mitts. So I like to hold the pads close and really meet. If you don't meet, again, you get wrenched. So like when she throws that two, again, again, I'm meeting it. And you hear me exhaling, but I'd like to hear her exhale. Again, that exhale gives her more of a relaxed motion around her torso to express more power in the strikes, but it also allows her to take a deep breath and keep oxygenating those muscles when, when she's fighting. And so like if she throws a combo, I would have her exhaling the whole time. One, two, three. Again. Again. So she's exhaling the whole time. Again, that'll help her refill those lungs, keep the muscles oxygenated, and it'll help her relax around that torso, giving a little more extension, a little more power into her strikes. And then you have the martial arts idea that it's like a dragon yell, like ah, ah expressing um, intent towards your enemy or your opponent, striking fear. Um, another thing that I like to do for my, the people that I'm training, is I like to have them pick something to aim at. So on these mitts here, I'd have them pick like just below the eye, between the eyes or at the eyes. And that's every time. So if she's throwing the one, two, she's looking at the eyes, the eyes. One, two, again. Or if she's doing one, two, low, three, she would even down here. 
So she's always looking and picking a target, and that's gonna be that's gonna make her better at picking targets when she's actually fighting, getting more intentional with her aim. Um, and you can work with your the person you're training on that. Another way to get more intentional with aim is how you hold your hands when you throw a strike. Like if I were gonna throw a strike up the middle here, um, she can and I've got big gloves on and I hold my hand like this, like a scoop, um, she can block that a little bit easier. But if I come up like this, straight up like this, rather than this, that is going to help me penetrate a little more. Also, um, just if, if you're, if you're uh, the person you're training is having issues, like what I had when I first started getting really strong with my uppercut, is it would jolt my hand all the way down to my elbow and, and make my, my arm hurt, basically. And I had to adjust how I threw my uppercuts in, the, in order to absorb the shock that was coming through. Um, so, adjusting how they throw their, their strikes. So she could throw a regular scooping backhand uppercut, just again, or she can do that parallel fist thing. There we go. And be relaxed. Just, just throw the up cut. There we go. Good. And it's the same coming like to the body. Like if she wants to reach my body here, like throw a regular strike like I showed you to my body here with this hand. No, that's the other one. That's the new one that I showed you. Show, throw the other, the old way. No, it's a hook to the body. Right? And it'd be hard, even, even here, it's hard for her to get to my body. But if she were to kink her hand over just a little bit, then she could get those two knuckles on my body. And so I'm asking her, at times, when she sees the opening on the opponent, or just mixing it up in um, mitt. So throw the second version. There we go. And drop, drop and throw. There, nice, again. Just like that, and that, just that little tweak in how she holds her hand is gonna help her get into the different little areas and, and be more effective with her shots. Um, so as pad holders, as coaches, as trainers, we get in the habits where when we are um, training somebody, holding mitts for somebody, one, two, we're the ones, one, two, now if you saw that pattern there, I'd have her throw and then I would step and then she would step and then I would step or then she would throw. I would step, she would step and throw. I would step, she would step and throw. And what I want my trainees or my, the people I'm training to do is I want them to get in the habit of being the ones to control the body, right? So instead of me always, one, two, three. And then me step, yeah, see how she stepped first? That's what I want. And I was going to step, so I could keep, I could, we could do that as part of training. Like we can jockey around. And then I could have her throw jab. Right? Or even I could say throw the jab. And if I'm too close, it would be her task. There we go, jab. Right? So like that's how you can mix it up to where they could get, like I know it's gonna be hard for her to jab from here, but I'm gonna call the jab anyway, and she's gonna have to figure it out. Jab. There we go. And she could even, a jab again, she could pivot out that way and jab. So it's just giving them some creative freedom to um, be the one to direct the bodies because come fight time, if they're used to being shuffled around according to somebody else's will, it's more likely to happen in the fight. And then also like how I was going like one, two, and then we would move, right? One, two, and then we would move. That gets a my turn, your turn, like a, a, almost like a waltz, a pattern. But you don't want your fighter to have predictable patterns. 
And so, again, like, you're going to have to figure out how to get them to throw their combos. One, two, three. One. And just keep you one, two. And mixing it up. But she needs to be shuffling, too. So instead of waiting for me to move, like, when I'm here holding the path, she should be moving where she thinks she needs to be. There you go. And one, two, three. And then again, she, there. That sort of thing. Where after she hits... She goes where she wants to go, and I can attempt to go where I want to push her to, but I really need her finding the spots that are best for her. And if you have a specific opponent and you know that this person is susceptible to something, right, you can kind of work on that too. So like if I know her next opponent is susceptible to uh, just throw it, jab, step forward, body. There we go, I'm in right. There we go. That I can see that her next opponent is susceptible to something like a jab, stepping forward with the right foot, and then a body shot. And then an overhand round. Or a straight cross. Right, do an overhand though. There we go. So again, we would work on that, right? So let's say she's pushed me, like she's moving me around. Yeah, right foot forward, body shot, push, overhand right, push, right? And so you're like thinking of things like that, but sh getting her to initiate it, not waiting for me to say go. Because um, come fight time, if she isn't used to initiating it, she may see it, but she doesn't have that next, that next part of the equation where she's initiating it and, and making it happen. Oh, and controlling distance. So like, like I said earlier, I'll come here and say throw the jab just to help her back up and understand jab, and then throw the jab, right? So again, she's back up and then throwing the jab, right? And so there's things like that, helping her understand, or even like a hook. like. If she needs to throw a hook, I can say throw a hook here, but I don't want her to just, just try to reach here from there. I don't want her trying to reach a hook from here and from there. I want her to do the footwork, get closer, and then throw the hook. Right, do it again. Get closer, and then throw the hook, right? Or even if I say hook, and I come in, she'll meet me with the hook, right? So hook. Push, right? Because sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes an, a, an opponent will be advancing on you and you meet them with the hook. Push, right? Things like that. So helping your, your, the person you're training to understand short and long distances. A lot of trainers are like opposed to things. I've met multiple trainers who are opposed to the way Floyd Mayweather fights. And I like, I have a series of jabs that I show people, and I run everybody through these series of jabs so they can learn like seven, eight different ways to jab, and one of them is from the, from the Philly show, right? Where you come out and jab, yeah. Inevitably, some coach always stops me and says, and he says to the other guy, you all gonna say to me, I don't want my fighters uh, learning that jab. Again, it's like, I give people an array of jabs and then they can pick and choose the ones they like and which are effective for them. And they'll say to the kid, you're not Floyd Mayweather, don't do that. But Floyd Mayweather had to practice to get good at that. He wasn't just born in the Philly shell, right? You could kind of say he was because his father and his uncle did that sort of thing, but they all had to practice it to get good at it. And so as a trainer and as a mint holder, don't be so stuck in your ways that you're afraid to venture outside the box and allow your fighters to try something new. And again, I say try something new. And if, if you've tried it and I say try it, when I say try it, I mean like a thousand times where you're, you're the person you're, you're training has really gotten a good go at. Um, at a technique and learning whether it works or not instead of just trying to trying it two or three times Ten times and then saying oh it doesn't work and giving up 
Try it a thousand times before you decide if it works or not. And if it doesn't work, don't do it anymore. And if it works, get better at it. So there are some people out there who hit really hard right away. So you'll be hitting mitts with them and they'll be just blasting the mitt, but they don't have proper technique and maybe even their bone structure or their musculature just can't hold up to how hard they hit yet. And so you have to have them tone it back and, and dial it in and get stronger before you allow them to hit so hard, especially, well, I wouldn't even say that especially, like you don't wanna hurt people you're just a personal trainer for who are trying to get in shape. You don't want them hurting themselves and falling out of shape. And you don't want fighters to hurt themselves going into a fight. So take care of yourself and your fighter. And I would say to remain studious at all times, like watch other pad holding sessions, um, watch other, um, uh, watch fights and find combinations that you like to look up to share with other people. Um, and encourage your students to be studious as well. So speaking of combinations that you might like, since you're a pad holder you, or if you're in a gym, you might have a system that you promote. Either in the gym you have a system that that, that gym promotes. And when I, when I say system, I mean like they have combinations that they throw, um, they have techniques that they practice. I'm gonna show you just a couple of the combinations that I like to teach people. The first one is the one, two, two, one, two. You hit them with the one, two, two, and those are just kind of short pops, and then you one, two. So the one, two, two is to just kind of frustrate them. One, two, two, get them frustrated. One, and then bang. So one, two, two, one, two. Again, back up, back up. Make that two pop. One, two, three. One, two. There we go. Again, breathe, two. One, two, One more time. You know, there we go. So that's one. And then, short. Short. And rotating. One, two, two, one, two. Back up one more time. One, two, two, one, two. I like that a combo a lot, and it's kind of unexpected. Nobody really expects that one. And so another one you can set them up for the unsuspected is to learn this one from Bernard Hopkins. So you're boxing, you're boxing, and you're bam, you're hitting them in the stomach and getting them to double up. Uh, you know, you want to hear that uh, when you hit them. And you're still doing it, bam, hitting them, bam. Do it a few times, and then you drop like you're going to hit them in the, in the body, but instead, and then they drop their hands, they come across and hit them in the chin, okay? So she, I don't have the mid thing on, so she's not gonna get me, hit me hard, but we're gonna give you a quick demonstration. So she's gonna hit me in the body, <laughs> She's gonna get down in that and really drop that weight into the body. <coughs> right again. <coughs> All right, and this time she's gonna drop and then spring up and throw that left hook. Oh, I'm sorry. This time she's gonna drop and spring up and throw that left hook. <coughs> there we go. Because when she drops, I'm gonna go to protect my body and she's gonna <coughs> throw that left hook. So find things like that. And you know, Bernard Hopkins is great. Tyson had some great combinations he used to throw. Let's go back and watch some um, Mike Tyson videos. And if you're into mixed martial arts, uh, you can watch like Booyakao, you can watch um, Adesanya, you can watch um, Strickland, John Jones. There's lots of people out there to choose from for you to go and start developing your own style of doing things. Once again, I'm Coach Brian with Northwest Elite Spirit, and this has been How to Hold Mitts for Beginners. This is my assistant, Kylie, my daughter. Um, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Like, comment, share, and as always, 
practice for access to my uh, suggested library, my blog, to purchase Northwest Elite Spirit merchandise, and to sign up to be trained by me online personally, go to northwestelitespirit.com. I've recently released three books. One is called um, The ABCs of Strength and Endurance, The Essential Guide to Strength and Endurance by myself, Ryan James Spears, with a little help from AI and editing. Um, the second one is completely AI, ABCs of Recovering from Divorce for Men, and Walking in a Warrior's Garden, the ABCs, which is also, or which is completely um, AI prompts. Um, anything else? Thank you guys for letting me share again. Hope you can use this. Do you like my form? Yeah, it was.